Good afternoon, everybody. Thank God for another day among the land of the living. God is good. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. We are in the book of Revelation, and I'm going to try and sneak in a, um, a teaching here. On, and We're in chapter 8 of Revelation. And so it's been a slow process, but we're, we're making headway um, little by little. So, you know, just thank God for another opportunity to study his word. You know, we serve a God that tells us what's going to happen before it happens. And about um, 25, 30 percent of the Bible is Bible prophecy. So it's so important. If you don't study end time prophecy and, you know, Bible pro prophecy in general, you're missing out on about 25, 30% of the Bible. It's so important to teach the whole word of God. Amen. And, you know, God has told us what's going to happen in the last days. There is literally a final seven year period coming. And God has given us. Um, signs, you know, about what's going to be taking place during this time frame. And so, you know, Matthew 24, uh, Mark 13, Luke 17, 21, you know, the disciples asked Jesus what would happen in the end times. And he goes on to give them a list of things that would take place before the end of the age and the end of the world before Jesus would return and so, you know, we, we serve a God that tells us what's going to happen before it happens. And so it's getting ready to start raining. So you might hear some rain noise as I do this teaching, but praise God. You know, it's such a blessing to have the word of God to go by. Um, we're very blessed. And I just want to say that I, I truly believe we're living in the last days, um, you know, I think we're going to enter into that final seven-year period very soon. There's some that believe that we have entered into it. I, I believe personally that, you know, first thing we're going to see is false messiahs, and um, we see deception. We see false disciples. You know, Jesus said the first thing he said is, "Be not deceived. Uh, many shall come in my name, claiming that I am Christ. They'll come, and so." If, if, you, if one says he's over here or he's over there, don't be deceived. Why? Because we know Jesus is coming from above. The same way he ascended up, he's going to come back again. So, you know, we know he's coming, and he's coming soon. We're in chapter 8 of Revelation. And as we read chapter 8, it's, it's very, um, you know, it's a, it's a pretty black and white chapter. God's wrath is beginning to be poured out in chapter 8. And that is the bottom line. As you read, we just read the seals. Uh, first seal, we saw deception. Uh, second seal, peace was being taken from the earth, was the red horse. Third seal, we see price fixing and uh, famine and pestilence. And it lines up perfectly with the Gospels. Um you look at seal four, I believe that's when the great tribulation begins. The rider on the fourth horse is given uh, the ability to kill up to 25% of the population at that point in time. And I truly believe that's where the, um, the great tribulation begins in seal four. I believe that the seven seals are an overlook of the, of the final seven years of this age. Before we enter into, before Jesus returns and sets up his kingdom, and I believe that, well, I believe the final thousand years of this, or of the, the millennial kingdom, when Jesus reigns and rules for a thousand years, I believe that final thousand years begins when he comes back to rapture the body of Christ. And then he'll take us up to heaven and he'll come back and he's got some business to take care of. Um, and then we'll come back with him to fight that final battle of Armageddon. And so, or the battle of Gog and Magog. Uh, so 
So I believe that the wrath of God is, actually begins in seal or in chapter eight. Seal five is talking about all those that are martyred for their faith, for their testimony of Jesus Christ. Jesus is our testimony. And many are going to be uh, martyred for their testimony of Jesus. Jesus said, if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before, before my father. But if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my father. And one thing you don't want to do is deny the name of Jesus. Don't deny the name of Jesus. He is our testimony, and it's our testimony that will take us into eternal glory. They overcame him. If we, we'll read it you know, uh, later on down the road in chapter 12 as it gets into detail about the Great Tribulation. It describes the Antichrist. And, but one thing you see there is it says that we overcome him, meaning Satan, by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of our testimony, and they love not their lives even unto the death. We know we're saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. It's our testimony of Jesus as our Lord and Savior that saves us. It's our faith in him that declares us righteous. And it's our faith in him that overcomes Satan and overcomes death and hell. It's our faith in Jesus that will take us to eternal glory. It's the blood of the Lamb, nothing but the blood of Jesus. But it also says this, they overcome him by, um, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and they love not their lives even unto the death. That's 12 and 11 of Revelation. So there's coming a time, and that's the beginning of the Great Tribulation period. Uh, Satan will be cast out of heaven, and he'll possess the Antichrist. He'll, he'll enter into the temple of God. Many believe that a, temple, a third temple is going to be rebuilt. I believe that's going to take place. And he'll demand all to worship him. He'll put an end to the sacrifices. And the twice daily, I believe it's twice daily sacrifices. And he'll demand all to worship him. You don't take the mark of the beast. Uh, he'll demand all to take a mark. Uh, on the right hand or the forehead and if you don't take that mark you won't be able to buy or sell and eventually many will die for their faith they'll be killed because they don't worship the antichrist and satan and it, you know that's a pledge taking that mark is a pledge that you're going to worship satan and at that point see at some point in chapter 14 of revelation before that takes place of angels going to fly through heaven and tell everybody, do not take the mark. We'll read about that in chapter 14 at a later date. Don't take the mark. All that take the mark, you seal your fate and you will go to hell. Do not take the mark. But then it says, blessed is he who dies from henceforth out. So there's coming a time where you're going to have to choose your testimony of Jesus and to worship Jesus. Or you're going to take an allegiance to worship Satan. And that's what that mark of the beast will be. So, you know, it's coming and we're almost there. And I truly believe we're going to enter into that phase at uh, sooner than later. Um, you know, we see all the signs taking place and it's coming. So that is the bottom line. So I believe uh, seal five, those who are martyred for their faith are all in seal five. And, and in seal six, you see the wrath of the lamb is going to be poured out. But before the wrath is poured out, I believe the rapture takes place in seal six. So, and then in seal, in, in uh, chapter seven, that's not seal seven, it's chapter seven. You see all those who came through the great tribulation. Some were martyred and some were raptured. Um, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, you'll see the Son of Man coming. So, and he'll send his angels to gather the elect. So, I believe seal six is when the wrath of the Lamb has come, it is come. And before the wrath is poured out, the rapture takes place. And then in chapter seven, you see all those who have been raptured and they're standing before the throne of God, um, singing praises and worshiping God. And so you see the 144,000 sealed, and you also see uh, the Gentile nations who have been saved. So, And now we're in seal 8. 
or excuse me, we're in chapter 8, which begins the seventh seal. And I believe this is when the wrath of God is going to be poured out. So let's get into chapter 8. I think we can do this in another 10 minutes or less. Let's go for it. Um, there's not a whole lot to it. I just believe that this is the beginning of the wrath to be poured out. Let's get right to it. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your goodness and mercy, Lord. And we thank you for another opportunity to study your word. Help us to get something out of it. In Jesus' name, amen. Chapter 8, here we go. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God. And to them were seven trumpets. So we see the seven angels that stand before God and they're given these seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And I believe that verse has something to do with, if you read in, in seal five, chapter six, seal five, it says this in verse 9. He had opened the fifth seal, and I saw under the altar the souls of them who were slain for the word of God and for their testimony, which they held. These are those that are martyred for their faith. They're given the white robes. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, see this, verse 10. Oh, how long, O Lord, holy and true? Do you not judge and avenge our blood on them who dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest for yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren who should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. So they say, how long, O Lord, holy and true, do, we, do you not avenge our blood on those who have killed us? And he says, wait a little bit longer because there's more that need to be martyred for their faith just as you were. They're given these white robes. They don't have bodies to put the robes on. They're told to rest a little bit longer, but they get, they're given their white robes. And then in, and then in chapter seven, you see them, them standing with their white robes on. But I believe, um, you know, where it says, verse three, chapter eight, verse three, and another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. I believe that this has to do with those saints that are asking how much longer, O Lord, holy and true, before you avenge our blood on those who have martyred us. Okay, verse four, and the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, I believe that's the prayers they're talking about, those that have gone through the tribulation period and are martyrs, ascended up before God and out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer. See, this is the wrath of God beginning to be poured out. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar. See, if you go back to chapter 7, at the beginning of chapter 7, it says this. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice. Okay. Let's see. Did I? There's a certain part I wanted to mention. Well, let's read that having a seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Okay, and that's talking about the 144,000 that were sealed. What I actually wanted to read was verse 1 of chapter 8. I already read it. I apologize. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. So I believe that silence was um, the rapture has taken place. And now that the, the angels are be, being given these um, trumpets 
It says here, and I saw the angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Okay, so they're given they're being given these trumpets, and the, the wrath is getting ready to be poured out. And I believe that period of time is after the rapture, and as time the the there's a space of silence, and then now the wrath is getting ready to be poured out. The trumpet judgments. Okay. Now verse. Let's go to verse 4. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of, his, out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar. This is the wrath being poured out. And cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and, earthquake, and an earthquake. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. So they prepared themselves to sound and pour this wrath out. The trumpet judgments are being poured out. The wrath of the Lamb is beginning to be poured out at this point. The saints are in heaven. The rapture has already taken place in seal 6. We see them all in heaven gathered in chapter 7. Everybody that's raptured, in chapter 7, they've all been raptured by chapter 7. It says they've all come out of great tribulation. All the saints that are in heaven in chapter 7 have come out of great tribulation. Amen. The great tribulation period. They were either martyred for their faith or they made it through it and they were, they were resurrected and went in the rapture. But it says they went through the tribulation period. Okay, verse 7. The first angel sounded and there followed hail. And fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth. So this is the first angel sounding. Fire is being cast upon the earth by the first angel. And the third part of the trees was burned up, and all green grass was burned up. And the second angel sounded, and as, and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea. And the third part of the sea became blood. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died. So a third part of everything is being burned up right now. The mountains, the sea, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. Okay? And the third trumpet sounded. And the, th let's see, and the third tr angel sounded. So they're blowing their trumpets. And there fell a great star from heaven burning as it were a lamp. Some say this could be a meteorite. I don't know. All I know is that the, the earth is getting burned up at this point, and the wrath of God is being poured out. The wrath of the Lamb. Okay. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers. So a third part of the sea, a third part of the rivers, a third part of the mountains. And upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of waters became wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Okay, verse 12. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten. So a third part of everything is being burned up. Um, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars... So as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for the third part of it, and the night likewise. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. So there's three more trumpets getting ready to be blown. Four angels have blown their trumpets. Everything's getting burned up. A third part of the sea, a third part of the river, a third part of the mountains. Um, listen, at this point, a third part of the creatures are killed. At this point, the wrath is being poured out. Okay, this is not the wrath of Satan. This is not the tribulation period where they're, you know, you have your head cut off. And, you know, that's the wrath of Satan. This is the wrath of the Lamb. This is the wrath of God being poured out at this point. We are not here during this period. The resurrection and rapture have taken place. 
those who missed the rapture now there's a couple different viewpoints on that some say that they are nat they are protected from the wrath they're sealed in their forehead and God protects them um, which I it, that's the only thing that makes sense to me there's another viewpoint that I, I'm not quite sure how to explain um, has to do with the 10 days of awe where they have a 10 day period to come to the Lord to repent and get right with God but I can't I'm not going to go into that teaching right now because that's a uh, I'd have to do a little more studying on that but the bottom line is this the wrath of the Lamb is being poured out right now and the body of Christ is not here at this point we're in heaven chapter 7 the rapture has taken place all those that came through great tribulation, either they were martyred for their faith or they were able to escape and they 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 made it to the end and they went in the rapture. Um, but now the wrath is being poured out. And I truly believe as we read not chapter nine and we go on chapter 10, we see the wrath. Nothing but wrath being poured out right now. The, we, we need to realize this. The wrath of Satan is different than the wrath of God. Okay? The wrath of Satan, he's given a space to kill the saints. But, see, we need to remember this. The Bible says, fear him not, which is able to kill the body and not the soul, but rather fear him, which is able to kill both the body and the soul. See, Satan does not have the ability to kill our soul. He'll be given a space and time where we, he can kill the, our bodies. He doesn't have authority to kill our soul. And in the end, you know, if we, if we go through this period of time and we make it all the way to the end, we get raptured, praise the Lord, hallelujah. But if you have to give your life for your testimony, um, you're going to go to heaven. Satan can kill the body. Man can kill the body. But the Bible says we overcome him by our testimony. And if you have to give your life, and they love not their lives even unto the death. Chapter 12 and 11 says that to be so, declares that to be so. Let me read it real fast. And they overcame him by the blood of the land, lamb and by the word of their testimony. Our testimony is in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And they love not their lives even unto the death. There's going to be many people that die for their faith. But in the end... We're going to enter into the kingdom of God. We're going to enter in into eternal glory. If you have to give your life for Jesus, for your testimony, thank God that we know that we're going to spend an eternity with God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and all the beautiful people of God that place their faith and trust in Jesus. This is not a time that's going to be a fun time. But in the end, the saints win and we live forever in eternal glory. So um, so we see here, chapter 8, the wrath of God is now being poured out. The wrath of the Lamb is being poured out. And so we have four trumpets that have been blown. Four angels have blown their trumpets. And a third of everything has been burned up at this point. Now there's one thing that I, I'm not 100% sure about. Um, if this is speaking of the whole planet Earth, which most say it is, but there's another teaching that says that it's dealing with the, if you go back to chapter 10 of Genesis, I believe it is, it's the table of nations during that time, during Bible time at the beginning. If it's dealing with that um, part of, you know, that geographical area, um, the Bible land area, you know, Israel and its surrounding nations over there, or if it's talking about the whole earth. Most people say it's the whole earth, but I don't know. The bottom line is um, the wrath is being poured out at this point, and we're not here. The saints are not here, but there is a possibility that those who have gotten saved, because God doesn't pour his wrath out on his children, those who do get saved after the rapture, they are um, protected. Um, they're sealed. God seals them. He protects them supernaturally. So anyways, that 
I'm going to call it good right there. Uh, chapter 8 is pretty much talking about the wrath of God is beginning to be poured out. And four of the trumpets have been blown. And a third of everything has been burned up. And we don't want to be here during this time, okay? We want to make sure that we have um, escaped that. <laughs> and we're in heaven at this time. When all this wrath is being poured out, we want to be in heaven. Um having a glorious time uh, with all the beautiful people of God that place their faith and trust in Jesus and with God our Father. And, you know, at this time, I believe that Jesus is actually um, doing this fighting. So I believe we're with the Father at that point in time, but I believe Jesus is down here. Um, he's got some business to take care of. I could be wrong, but... That's just my viewpoint. So God bless y'all. I hope you got something out of it. The bottom line is chapter 8, the wrath of the, the wrath of the Lamb is being poured out at this point, and we don't want to be here when the wrath is being poured out. Amen. We want to make sure that we are in heaven, enjoying ourselves, and the only way you can make sure that you don't go through this is that you repent to God and place your faith and trust in Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He's the Savior of the world, and He is the only way to the Father. He is the only way to escape this eternal punishment. See, we all deserve uh, eternal wrath as our punishment. The wages of sin is death, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We've all earned um, eternal death as our punishment. And the only way you're going to get out of that eternal death sentence is by repenting to God, turning to God with all your heart and placing all your faith and trust in Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Jesus will deliver you from that eternal punishment and he will take you to eternal glory. That's the bottom line. And the way you can receive this gift of salvation is by repenting to God and placing all your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Trust in Jesus to deliver you from eternal wrath and trust in him to take you to eternal glory. That's the bottom line. So God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. Until next time, um, you know, love God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. Have a beautiful day, everybody.